Hi everyone, I'm here at Michigan Tech's Rosé Center, the A-Space Gallery, and I'm going to take you on a tour of Denali. Not the National Park, but the art show, Music and Art Inspired by Wilderness. So follow me. The first thing we notice when we enter the space um, are these uh, two, what are considered artist books. Um, there's some information on the wall here done by Susan Campbell and Margot Class. All of these artworks were made in response to musical compositions. So the music and the sheet music are a large part of sort of understanding what the artists are uh, trying to say. There are binders accompanying the works that you can look at, feature um, profiles on the composers, some notes on the music, and the music itself. Now, I personally don't read sheet music, but there is, um, I don't know, there's something about the, uh, the way the notes are arranged that I feel like even if you don't read sheet music, it, it really speaks to the way the work is created and um, kind of it helps to inform it a little bit, I guess. Throughout the exhibition, um, there are QR codes posted. Uh, so you can get out your smartphone. And with this particular one, whoops, you don't even have to take a photo. It'll take you right to the website, um, and you can learn more about the, uh, the artworks, the musical compositions. Just moving on down here. I wanted to focus on this pair. Um, oh, these QR codes here as well allow you to listen to the music itself. So as you go through the exhibition, you can hear the sounds that informed the artworks. Um, this particular piece of music is called Tundra Tapestry by Christina Rusnak. And you can see um, from the content of the artworks, we're talking about the ground, right? The tundra. Um, a, a sort of a fascinating bit of information about all these works. Uh, they were created independently of each other in response to music. So, um, Charlotte Bird, who created the art quilt, and Nancy Housel Johnson, who created the tile works, um, weren't uh, discussing what their process was going to be or the, the uh, components of their artworks. Um, so these were created in response to the music independently. And we can see similarities between these two as well, these artworks that were created in response to um, Christian Dubose's composition, Savage. And you can see just like the vertical nature of um, the line in the painting and the, the trees in the, uh, the box construction um, by Margot Class and Mary B. Kaufman here really mimic the, um, I don't know, just the falling nature of some of the notes. There was a really neat notation in this book. Let me see um, if you can get in on that, Steve. It says river-like as the directions uh, for the musicians which I thought was fascinating. So there's, there's all kinds of um, uh, neat bits of information you can gain from kind of looking interdisciplinarily at the, uh, the works presented. You may be moving on to this far wall here. There are some three-dimensional works in the show. Um, we've got uh, this piece by Charlotte Bird, um, which is a textile-based sculpture. which is, was made in response to On Distant Hills by Brent Lawrence. And you can, that you can see the distant hills and how they move uh, into the background. Um, Nancy Housel Johnson with her uh, ceramic piece here, showing those same distant hills. Definitely working in um, a painterly fashion uh, in craft media. All right. 
Moving on down, um, we can see another art quilt, this time by artist Reen Ann Carroll, um, and this box construction by Susan Campbell that were both created in response to a work by Jennifer Wright called We Sing the Mighty Land Into Being. Um, Susan Campbell is, uh, in addition to being an artist, is also a poet. And a few of her works in the show, you can see there's um, sort of the, the third art of poetry being added in. And this is one of them um, that was created in response to uh, just the ancientness of uh, the Denali National Park. And then the last work I want to look at, or the last uh, uh, trio of works I want to look at is these two art quilts that were created in response to Tatler Creek by Don Sontag. Um, again, you can see some similarities that are, are working uh, in between the two different quilts. What I find really fascinating with these is just the nature of line in them. Um, if we look at Charlotte Bird's art quilt here, it's really got that feeling of water, right? There's an implied line that just takes your eye right down and out. Um, Reen Ann Carroll's working with that same line, except her line's horizontal here. Um, if you get right up close to these works, um, which the size really allows for that, you can see um, that uh, Reen Ann Carroll dyes and silk screens her own fabrics for the work. So you can see kind of that extra level of um, production, I guess in her artworks. All right, and just one final thing. Um, with art shows, we like to have uh, opening parties, but um, out of an abundance of caution and out of people's health concern, we are offering instead at Denali a um, thank you bag for attending. So please, if you're able to, come on down to uh, the Rosé Gallery A space, masked up, um, maximum five people in the gallery space at a time, and um, take a bag home as a token of our thanks. If you want to learn more about the fascinating stories that accompany the creation of these musical compositions and artworks, um, please go to the Rosé Center's YouTube channel to um, watch panel discussion that was created uh, in response to the public wanting to know more about the artworks themselves.